Hello everyone, welcome back to VTU eShikshana program. Myself, Professor Nitin Kumar. So in this lecture of mobile application development, I am going to demonstrate how to develop the user interface dynamically. So what is static, what is dynamic? That's the primary difference that you must know. Static means what? Why? Because here I am using a term called dynamically. Dynamically means so it's not a static one. What is the difference between static and dynamic? So you all know what is static memory allocation and dynamic memory allocation. Static memory allocation means if it is fixed. So before the execution of the program itself, if it is fixed, such memory allocation is called static memory allocation. Dynamic memory allocation means we are going to make use of various memory allocation functions such as malloc, calloc, realloc. So the memory allocation will happen based on the user input size. So we are going to allocate the memory by using the memory allocation function. But how to create the UI dynamically? So you all know about the memory allocation uh, static and dynamic. So how you will divide the user interface? UI means user interface dynamically as well as statically. So firstly I will list out the three methods that we follow to design the user interface one by one. First one. The most common and the most used method it is drop down. So till now we are we used to follow the same procedure drop down. The next one XML coding. The last one UI dynamic. I will come to this finally. So oh, if you segregate these three methods, so we can segregate this into two methods. One is the uh, first one, drop down method and the XML coding that we use to follow will be static in nature. So here we are going to code it in Java that is dynamic in nature. What is the static and dynamic with respect to user interface? It's a very simple one. So if you drop and draw, drag and drop a button to your widget, your uh, screen, so just if you go to the design, so you can observe the difference, that button will appear in the design. So we have not yet executed the program, but the design is appearing in the application development. So that kind of user interface development is called static UI development. Either you code it or you drag and drop. So both will have the same effect. Before the execution of the application itself, that those two will design, those uh, particular design will appear in the application. But this dynamic is, so just the thing is, so you are not going to code either by using drag and drop or by using the XML coding. Instead of that, we are going to make use of a wonderful programming language that is Java which will be used for the backend development. Instead of backend development, we are going to use the same for the UI development. So means the backend, uh, once again, once you create a project, so you will come across two files, right? One is XML, other one is Java. So I'm going to create, uh, comment that XML file so that the design is completely empty. So and I'm going to queue the parameters as well as I'm going to call the components, buttons or anything that I want in my design in the Java part only. So now my application will be having only one file by name Java in which both design as well as the application development will be present. So and if you design anything in Java part using various parameters, that design will not immediately appear in the application development design screen. Instead of that, you have to execute the program. So this will come into picture during the runtime. So once you execute the particular application, then only during the execution time, you can see that UI. That's why we use the term creation of user interface dynamically. Static means without the execution itself, that particular application design is up available in the design part. Dynamically means, the design part will be completely empty. We are not going to use the design part. Instead of that, we are going to use the design. We are going to perform the design in the Java only. When we execute this, when you run this, so you can observe the design. 
So for this, I'm going to demonstrate a simple example. I'm not going to use a complex one. Just I'm going to use a linear layout and a button. That's it. Not more than that. So this is what I'm going to demonstrate in this particular application. So just observe. This is the application and this UI is created in Java. This is what the text view that I'm going to display and submit button. I'm not going to add any action for this one. So I'm going to create this kind of UI not by using drag and drop I'm not using drag and drop or I'm not using XML coding. Instead of that, I'm going to create this kind of UI using Java in the back end itself. So just observe. So this is my UI. So which are all the parameters that I need to provide? Which are all the components that I'm using here? Those component instance will be created in the Java part. Firstly, I will define the parameters. Parameters for the components, not for the whole layout. Whether it should occupy the whole screen with respect to width, yes, match parent. Whether it should occupy the whole screen with respect to height, no, wrap content. The parameters that I'm going to give for the text view is match parent, wrap content. For button, wrap content, wrap content. For with both with respect to width as well as height. For with respect to view group, I'm going to use here as linear layout. For this layout, I need to provide the parameter. Whether it should occupy the whole way, height wise screen, yes, match parent. Width, yes, match parent. So you have to just define the parameters and you have to create an instance of that particular components and you can create the UI using the Java part only without using this drag and drop feature and XML coding. This is what I'm going to demonstrate in this particular example creation of UI dynamically. Let's start the demonstration. Then I will be demonstrating how to create the user interface dynamically. So you know what is user interface? That is nothing but the thing that is visible to the user whenever they are going to use the mobile application. So we can create the user interface in three ways. First one, so by using the drag and drop feature that we have done till now, so that will automatically generate the XML code in the code part. Second one, by hard coding the XML code part, it will automatically generate the components in the design. Then apart from those two things that we have learned till now, in this particular demonstration, I will be demonstrating how to develop the user interface using Java. It's nothing but the uh, Java part which is there in the mobile application. Let's start this demonstration by opening the Android Studio. It's a wonderful demonstration where you are going to learn how to create the UI using Java. So because till now the examples that we have discussed where we were using uh, XML. So what here so the design will be automatically created whenever you execute the Java part, whenever you execute the main application. First, I will be showing the demonstration using a normal two procedures that we have followed till now. So the same design I am going to develop by using Java. So I am going to create a new project. So by selecting the empty activity and I am going to give the name as user interface application, UI application. I will click on finish. The context of this particular demonstration is very simple. So here we are going to develop the user interface without using XML or without using Java part. 
that user interface will be created whenever you execute this java part that you have developed so creation of user interface dynamically while your application gets executed So please remember one thing with respect to this Java, Java can be used in two ways. First one for backend development that we are using right now. Second one even with respect to creation of user interface you can make use of Java. Java is a wonderful programming language so that's why it will be used in full stack development. So where you can use Java for both backend as well as front end. So till now in so many applications that we have developed. So where we are using the Java in the backend, but in this particular application, so we are going to use the Java in the front end for the creation of UI. But the creation of UI will happen only when the execution of this application is done. So my application is almost ready to start the development. So it's a very simple application. So I will not take much time. So my application is ready. So this is my design. This is the design. So just up so. So here with respect to this design, this is my design part. So to design anything like in this design part so we are going to use two features two things one is drag and drop like this the components which is required to your design you are going to search for that particular component in this search bar if it is not available here and you are going to drag and drop that component to your design based on the layout that you are using if you, see, if you are using constraint layout you have to set the constraints if you are using linear layout you have to provide the orientation you are going to fix it like this and you are going to use it in your design. This is how the UI UI will be created by using a simple procedure. If you don't know about the XML R, if you don't know, don't have the programming line knowledge. So whenever you drag and drop the components to your design, the code will be automatically generated in the code part of the design. So just observe, I'm going to delete this. This is the first way and the easiest way of uh, developing a user interface in mobile application development by using this drag and drop feature. So just observe, I'm going to delete these two. I have deleted the text view and now the design is empty. So just observe now. So the second way is by doing the hard coding. So how to hard code? It's very simple. Just the thing is, so you have to use text view and you have to provide the length. Just observe, I will show you it once again. So I'm drag and dropping the text view to here and in code you can observe the text view is present here but so the constraint has been not been set. I am setting the constraints. So this is the first way of uh, creating a design by using the uh, drag and drop feature okay so the second way of creating a design is so go to the code part of design so just you can look at the output just if you look at this output I will execute this so can we, the text view will be visible in the output. This is the first way of creating a design. It's a simple procedure. Just so which are all the components required near the design. Just drag and drop those components and use those components 
in the design and set the constraints if you are using constraint layout and based on the layout which we are using set the constraints. see the output so once you start the android studio framework initially uh, for up to unless until you get the output first output it will take uh, more time so you must have that patience to wait so after getting the first output you can see the concurrent outputs easily without spending a huge time or because this particular device should come online and uh, it should reboot and it should save the state then the application will be loaded and it should be installed and then only you can see the output so for this procedures it will take around three to four minutes for showing the output itself so once after that the output will be for example if we make any changes and after if you are making the changes if you execute so then it will take around within 30 seconds you can see the output the first time until the gradle build is over it will take more time just i will be showing just now uh, we are done with the drag we have used drag and drop feature and uh, we have added one a simple text view and we have uh, uh, no additional components has been used so just i will be demonstrating that particular application so which has been developed by using drag and drop the UI which has been developed by using the drag and drop feature so my application is ready just waiting for the device to come online Just if you look at this design, so we have placed only one text view, nothing more than that. The name of the text view is text view. So that I want to show it in the screen. I have added this one by using a um, drag and drop feature. So you can observe the same in the output, connecting the emulator. So once it comes online, you can see the output. waiting for target device to come online it just it's a simple output that is just a text view will be visible nothing more than that so after that i will show the second way to design the ui to create the user interface that is by using the hard coding next i'm going to show the third way to create the 
um, uh, user interface by using the Java. That's what I'm going to demonstrate in this particular video. device is ready so you can observe the output here pixel is getting started so just uh, text view will be visible there so just a simple text view have used in my design by using drag and drop feature so nothing uh, unique or nothing complex that i have done here just have placed a text view by using a feature to design the user interface using drag and drop that's what i have done so now, just up so so the text view is visible which I have designed which I have designed using drag and drop next one so this is a simple way that we are going to follow while creating a user interface in any Android application the second way for the same one I am going to add another one that is button button so Wrap content, wrap content. This kind of uh, application, this kind of uh, creating user interface is called hard coding. So, and text, text, button, and ID. These are the primary features that we are going to use. the constraints on both the sides like how it is there in the previous component why because I am using a constraint layout same components I am going to use here so set the constraints on all four sides ok just observe if you look at this once after coding this so you can observe the button is visible here ok so I will execute this the same thing this is how the second way of creating the user interface the first way of creating a user interface is by using the drag and drop feature that we generally use so most commonly it will be used in the um, uh, one who don't know about the XML or one who don't know about the user interface design the second way is to design manually by you doing the hard coding instead of drag and drop feature so if you know how to code how to create a design using xml then you are going to code it by using the code part like how i have added the button right now without using the drag and drop feature these are the two types of user interface creation where you are you will be working with only design you are not disturbing the java part okay so just look at the output that we are going to get right now so along with the text view you can observe the button that we generally uh, create that we have created using a uh, xml so these are the two common ways of creating a user interface so which will be created automatically whenever the particular code segment has been added in the xml part 
there is no need of uh, waiting till the application gets executed just observe if you look at this design it's already there it's already created the same thing will appear in the emulator in the form of output that's it emulator in the form of output means it's not created dynamically after the execution of application the creation of user interface is happening statically before the execution of application itself just if you look at this output this kind of creation of user interface is called static user interface creation before the execution of application just if you look at the output that we are getting here so the button that we have placed is appearing here followed by the text view that we have placed by using the drag and drop feature the button we have placed by using a uh, hard coding means we have coded using excel so the main concept of this particular video how to create the ui apart from these two procedures the first one is drag and drop the first one is just select that item and drag and drop the second one is go to code and code that particular segment code particular component like button how i have hard coded the button the next one so how to create the user interface in java part without disturbing without using the design so just observe so this is the section which is responsible for your user interface just observe resources dot layout dot activity mean just observe i will make it command so just if you look at this so if you command this one this design will not appear why because this is the one which is responsible for your design that is appearing just i have commented this one so that i am not using this ui which is created using the design instead of that i am going to design the ui i am going to use create a ui so by using the java part which dynamically uh, made available to the emulator whenever this main activity at java is executed so firstly in this kind of ui creation firstly i need to call the view group why because view group is nothing but uh, various types of layouts that we are going to use view group dot so we have to call the view group and we have to provide the layout parameters and which kind of layout we are going to use layout parameters so it's nothing but params means which kind of layout we have lot of different types of layouts are constraint linear relative absolute frame layout table layout so that parameter should be passed in the first thing that's the first thing i am going to use linear layout here linear layout just observe we are getting lot of layouts linear layout view groups absolute list so which has the layout you are going to use that i am going to use linear layout linear layout and i am going to provide the parameters the parameters will be match parent wrap content means it will be confined match parent means it will occupy the whole screen so view group dot layout params dot match pair means it should occupy the whole screen this is with respect to width this is with respect to width next i need to pass the same with respect to height also that i will come to do in the next line view group dot layout params dot match pair or wrap content So these are the two possibilities that you have to give match parent and wrap contents. So the layout that I'm creating is linear layout I'm using in the design, and so the parameters width and height will be match parent and wrap content. Next, I will call that linear layout instance. That instance should be created. That is linear layout layout is equal to like how we create the object of a class. I'm going to create a linear layout class here. i am using instance of linear layout by using this keyword done so firstly i have passed the parameters i have declared the parameters then i am calling the layout which kind of layout i am using here is linear layout next so next i need to provide the orientation as i mentioned earlier this is the only layout linear layout where you have to provide the orientation so linear layout sorry you have to use only reference layout 
dot set orientation the orientation is linear layout dot vertical linear layout dot the orientation is vertical as we use generally whenever we use orientation the orientation that we are going to provide is vertical orientation next inside this linear layout i am going to place two components one is text view other one is button which is not there in the previous one i am not copying it i am placing the components text view and button using the only java part first i will create a text view text view tv is equal to i am not creating instead of text view new text view i am going to use this keyword to remove the ambiguity to point the constant so for this text view i am going to set a text set text the text is this user interface is created using which language java this user interface has been created using java next i need to set the size of this text view text view dot we have we, ha we can e explore all features which we use generally in the xml set text size i'm going to give 30 i guess it's more than enough and we have to provide the parameters for this text view where should it should appear it should make use of the parameters that is text view dot set layout parameters that we have declared that is height width it should match the parent means it should occupy the whole screen height it should wrap the content means it should be of small size so that parameters we have to pass why because of what's the size of text view that should be created that is the parameters that we have declared in the previous so done with the creation of text then with the uh, declaring the text view and what's the text that should appear in the text view and what's the size and what's the, the size of text that is uh, that should be appeared and what's the parameter that we are following next i will create the same for the button button etn is equal to new button and this so firstly i will set the text of that button etn dot set set text i will make use of submit I will rename it as submit that should appear in the double quotes but because it's a string that we are placing on the button as in the form of text submit next we have to provide the parameters how we have provided so button should match parent means width wise it should occupy whole screen height wise it should occupy only one or two centimeters based on the parameters wrap content and match parent so button button dot set layout parameters the parameters that we have declared in the first line next so we have to add these two things which we have created that such as text view we have created and we have created button these two things should be added to the um, linear layout that is this reference otherwise it should not be visible so that was i am going that was i am going to add layout dot add view to text view text view has been added to the layout linear layout next layout dot add view btn that i am going to add then finally we have to provide the parameters for that linear layout that we have defined for this linear layout the orientation with respect to width should occupy whole screen that is nothing but match parent height should occupy the whole screen that is nothing but match parent in place of match parent and wrap content that we are using for components with respect to the layout or a layout we are going to use match parent and match parent that's what i'm going to provide linear layout dot layout parameters is 
is equal to new linear layout parameters view group dot layout parameters dot match pairing means width wise it should occupy the whole screen similarly view group dot layout parameters dot match parent height wise also it should occupy the whole screen so finally i will add this dot add content view to layout and layout parameters it's a very simple program that we have developed right now firstly i have commented the design that we generally use in the design part so this design part will be created by two things one is by using a drag and drop feature other one is by using a hard coding if you know xml so firstly i am declaring the parameters for the components that i am going to design in my uh, ui for which every individual component width will occupy the whole screen height will not occupy the whole screen it will be small that's why width wise match parent height wise wrap content so then i am creating a instance of linear layout because the demonstration that i am going to demonstrate right now will be using linear layout so its orientation will be vertical so this is the only one layout where you have to provide the orientation so next i am creating a text view i'm by calling a instance and i'm creating a text inside the text view by placing this ui is created by using java and i'm providing the size of the text and i am providing the parameters the text you must use it is nothing but match parent and wrap content next i am creating a button and its text and its parameters the text is submit the parameters will be same match parent and wrap content that we have defined in the first line so next i am going to add the text view and button to the linear layout that we have declared next the parameters for the linear layout should be declared the parameters for linear layout is the layout should occupy the whole screen that's why width wise it should occupy the whole screen height wise it should occupy the whole screen that's why i'm using match parent and match parent finally i am adding the contents such as layout and layout parameters to the ui this will coming to picture whenever i execute this java part just observe i will execute this java part so that you can observe this output that is this ia is created by using java and a submit button just observe i am going to execute this so this is a third way or the dynamic way of creating the user interface without using the design part directly by using the java part so java is a wonderful programming language which can be used for both purpose one is for the front end design as well as back end design here we are using java programming language to design the user interface and this design will happen only when this particular execution of this activity will so that's why the ui has been created dynamically just observe this ui is created using java and the submit button is appearing so once you execute this particular java file the ui will be created the user interface has been developed by using java part instead of the design part that we generally use in other applications that we have done till now thank you